Sam Rizantel here. I'm very happy to welcome one of my former clients, Amber Velotten, to talk to me today about Lotus Group Coaching. Welcome, Amber. It's so nice to see you again. Thank you. It's so great to be here. You look Christmassy already with your little pie. I am. I am. <laughs> me and my flannel shirt, you know. Flannel your shirt. Yeah. <laughs> so Amber joined Lotus Group Coaching in the beginning of this year and was with us for six months. And Amber, tell us a little bit about why you decided, like, what was going on with you that okay. you felt like you needed extra support? Okay, well, I'd come out about three years ago, I had been in a catalyst relationship, and that relationship uh, pretty much dissolved in March, and mm -hmm. so I was definitely going through a lot just um, emotionally and the turmoil of, of all that, and so by about May, I was definitely feeling like I needed that support group around me and support system, and I happened to read your book. Um, mm -hmm which kind of introduced me to the work that you were doing. So the rest was history. I got in touch with you and you graciously, okay, here's all the links. And so um, that's when I joined. Mm -hmm. And I know in the beginning you were really struggling. Like you, you were very, very sad that your catalyst relationship ended. And um, like a lot of women are, you know, and, and for those of us who don't know, a catalyst is often the person that makes us realize we're not as quite as straight as we thought we were. <laughs> and, and oftentimes they can be a friend. Like I think, believe, I believe Amber's catalyst was a friend. They can be a friend. They can be a colleague from work. Um, they can be like a lot of times they're two couple friends, like a husband and wife couple friends, and two of the women fall in love. So that's what a catalyst is. And so when you joined us, you were really struggling. And so what did, what helped with this program? Um, there's so many great things about the program. Um, mm -hmm. You have the group where the group gets together on a Tuesday and a Wednesday night. And um, to be honest, um, I had only been in therapy before where it was like just an individual. Uh, and so I was not real sure how I was going to like that. And mm -hmm. actually, for me, that wound up being like a highlight of, mm -hmm. of the group. I think mm -hmm. in coming out later in life, um, one of the things I think that is so important is for that community and mm -hmm. to know that we're not alone, that we're not the only ones who have gone through this. And I think for so long, that's kind of what I thought. Um, and so being a part of the group really helped to, to va validate and in a way normalize the kinds of feelings and things that I was going through to have other women. Um, I'm still in a married relationship, although I'm working towards getting divorced, but being with other women who were also in a similar place or maybe women who were at a different trajectory, that really, really helped a lot just to be able to share our stories and our heartaches and our struggles. And I think just having that support network was amazing. I mean, I love the women in the group. They're so great. Um, well, that you know birds of a feather tend to uh, flock together and typically the women that I work with in my groups are often very they have very similar backgrounds but different stories you know um some of them have catalysts some do not most of the women that are in our group are going through a divorce you know or somewhere on the divorcing process whether they're maybe thinking about it all the way to people who are already divorced. So we go all, all, all kinds of ways. And occasionally we do get people who've never been married and don't have children. And, and But in the later in life community, um, that's always a smaller minority because most women follow the norm and get married and have children. Right. Um, and, and what I, I know, and, and it's very interesting, Amber, that you said is most people, when I tell them it's a group coaching program, they're like, ugh. <laughs> because that makes them really, really nervous, right? Um, what are some of the ways that we, like the other coaches and I, and I want to get to talk about your relationship with Barb because she was a big help to you. Yes. Barb, Barb Rollinson is one of the coaches that works within Lotus Group Coaching. And, you know, she's had a catalyst. Amber's had a catalyst. They had a lot to talk about together. And how did we make you feel safe in the group? How did we facilitate the groups so that everybody felt safe? 
Yeah, so I think one thing that's so important, um, I've been in online groups before that were really not healthy. And um, I think one thing was that we, you definitely set the boundaries and the rules. And so, you know, using I language versus you was like a big thing we talked about. Um, not offering advice to each other in a way that was like, you need to do this or you need to do that. I mean, it was very much a loving, caring environment. And I really, think that's because of the facilitation by the leaders in the group mm -hmm. that, that you all really set the clear rules, but you're also very engaging. I think so often, like um, you especially, like I remember, you know, so often you would say, you would just acknowledge what we were saying and just speak back to us. Okay, well, I, I hear what you're saying and, and I understand and I'm so sorry you went through this. I mean, just that kind of relationship with us, mm -hmm. I think really helps people feel more safe because you know that you're being heard. And I mean, this, this is stuff that is so deep. I mean, we've mm -hmm. hidden from it our whole life, a lot of us, you know, and so right. when you finally risk and you come out to know that you have other people that are in your camp that get what you're feeling, but also can validate that and, and appreciate the struggle that it is, but also praise the times where you really have grown. And I feel like you did that so well as well as the other folks that were in the group. So, yeah, th thank you. You know, I I've had like 20 years of group facilitation <laughs> because I was a, a, a chaplain for years and I used to do grief groups with people all the time. And so before the internet, I used to do them in person and I wish I could do them in person here, but the internet really works for our later in life community because it's spread out. So let's talk a little bit about the other coaches in the program. Linda does, I don't know if you've, at, so we have a Reiki practitioner. Did you ever do anything that um, I was not able to, I think oh. I ran out of time. Um, although okay. I did uh, participate one Friday morning, I remember. It's just with my work schedule, it was really hard to, yeah. to make those click. But So Linda Moore is our, our, our uh, Reiki energy healer. She, and you can use Reiki to help move energy, but you can also use it just for simple relaxation. Um, but she also like facilitates, we do something a couple, every other, like every other Wednesday night or every three Wednesday nights, we just do an after hours thing in which um, my dog just entered the room. Uh, <laughs> we do an after hours, which means it's just a social time. I'm not there. Linda's just there to keep the group safe. And people can talk about whatever you guys want to talk about. And that has been really, really helpful. So Amber, tell me about your relationship with Barb. Well, Barb was amazing. Um, As she is. I, we hit it off immediately. Um, just in, like you said, we talked about the catalyst relationship and um, there were times where I was struggling and I would kind of remember my catalyst and be missing her. And I remember one day I was having a really rough time. I was actually on the road for a work trip. And um, I said, Barb, can I talk to you for a minute? So we actually talked on the phone while I was driving, but she just had a way of really being able to really speak to um, to what I really needed. And the thing that I think touched me probably the most of anything that her and I talked about was discovering who I was apart from my my relationship with the catalyst I had. And I think I always saw myself up until the time where I broke up with this person as I was a lesbian in that context. And I think one of the things that Barb really helped me to realize is like when you can realize who you are as a lesbian or queer, apart from that catalyst relationship, that's when you're really going to start growing and healing. And that was so true. That was like a guiding kind of path for me to begin to see who am I apart from this person that I was with before. And I think that's when I really felt a real shift inside. Um, I'm not fully there yet, but, you know, I mean, we're all on a journey and I feel like that has really helped me a lot. And I just, I love Barb. I just think she's been so amazing and has a, has a, tender heart and you know we have a lot in common in other ways too just our personal interests and things so um like I really plants. like plants <laughs> yes we're very much into plants and nature together so yeah so. um you know I think that's one of the hardest things about the ends of the cat catalyst relationship because a lot of times our identity as queer women are often tied to that person and so it takes a while for us to develop our identity 
um, outside of that relationship. So like when I first, you know, a lot of people know that I'm married to my wife and she was the first person I was in relationship with woman, a relationship. And I knew in the beginning that a lot of my like queer identity was tied to her. It isn't anymore, Mm -hmm. but what I love, and that took time, that took time. But what I loved about what Amber did is she heard all those messages that we were talking about in the group. And then all of a sudden I saw her posting on Facebook, Mm -hmm all kinds of LGBTQ stuff. And it was almost like her way of letting the world know that, yeah, this is who I am and this is how I feel about my identity. And um, it was really such a wonderful transformation to see (laughs) from, you know, you being sad and heartbroken (laughs) to you being like, wait a minute, I'm gay whether I'm in relationship with this woman or not. And I am going to show the world who I am. And I really appreciated that journey of yours. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I remember I, when I came to the group one night said, you know, I've been buying the flannel shirts as one of them, and, you know, like more than I got the shoes and we talked about the Doc Martens versus the Clarks and, you know, so <laughs> it was just fun, like, you know, I'm trying to discover who, who am I? And then when the retreat idea came up, I was so excited about that because I get to meet my tribe, yeah. you know. Yeah, and, uh, we're having a retreat next week just for Lotus Group Coach members and Amber is coming in Nashville. So if somebody is struggling on their later in life journey, Amber, do you what do you recommend them to do? Well, I definitely would recommend the program to them. Um, mm-hmm. If, you know, because I just do feel like having that group time, taking the time, it's kind of like self-care really for yourself like if you're struggling um it's just like with anything whether you're in a therapeutic relationship with a counselor or something like it takes commitment it takes time it takes dedication and a a commitment to your healing and growth um but I feel like this group brings the best of all of that because you have people who are experienced with the counseling you have people who have the reiki you have and then you have that group set up and that's mm-hmm. a part of that community it's not a replacement necessarily for for a tribe like i'm trying to find what my tribe is here where mm-hmm. i live in virginia but um it definitely is like it's what i've had for the last mm-hmm. six months and it's been incredible you know, so well, I definitely would encourage folks to avail themselves of it. Well, it's almost like the community. So one of the hardest, one of the harder things to do when you're coming out later in life is to find community of other people like you. And I'm a few, huge believer in community. I have all the Facebook groups and, and Lotus Group Coaching has its own private Facebook group too. So people can connect with each other between groups. And what I find the hardest thing to do often is to find community in the beginning. It just, it's just hard. You, it, it's just hard. And so having a ready-made community where you are safe and you can come in and you know that everybody is going to treat you with respect, ha, you know, is really life-saving. And, you know, Amber, one of the things I think that I also love about Amber is she showed up. You know, a lot of times people will join groups or join my coaching program and they come to one or two things. They may come to a group once in a while, but Amber, as we say, worked the program (laughs) and she came to everything. She, you know, participated in the Facebook group. She did the individual sessions. She took advantage of both Barb and I, and within six months, she got to a place where she felt better. And she's like, you know, I'm going to spend my money on something that I want to do. I'm going to spend traveling and doing other things. And so I really admire that about Am- you, Amber, that you like you. you and it, we, we haven't even mentioned there's a whole platform on Kajabi in which we talk yeah. about everything going later in life. And I'm going to say, Amber, you are the first person to go through that entire thing. Really? <laughs> yes, you are. Well, and and I think all those components together make us move through that journey to get, you know, quicker. And so now Amber is like, okay, I'm going to find who my family is. I'm going to go and I will be partnered with somebody within a couple of years. And I'm going to create yes. my career life. Yeah. 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 Well, and, 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 and I, I do want to mention the Kadavi, um, if I'm saying it right. Um, Kajabi. Kajabi. Yeah. <laughs> Close enough. Um, 
But it is really fantastic because it takes you through so many different levels. And and I actually went back last weekend, although I was pretty much done with the program. You know, I've gone back and I feel like it's there available. And it's actually a platform that will be available to me mm -hmm. whenever. But I've downloaded things and really look forward to going back and just kind of seeing where I've come from. Because when I go back and look at the earlier parts of it, like, wow, you know, I remember like, where, where I was there. Now I'm kind of looking a lot closer at the divorce piece of it yeah. because mm -hmm. that's where I am right now is trying to figure all that out. And and I, um, that is one other thing I would say um, about the program that I really, really loved is that I never felt pressured that I had to make a certain kind of a decision. Like I have to get divorced or I have to um, leave my husband right now or, mm -hmm. or, you know, because I remember you saying at one point, like you don't necessarily have to ever do that you know it's really what feels best for you and so mm -hmm. I really appreciated that because like I've been taking things slow and because of my age in life because of where I'm at with things but I, I just love that that I never felt judged or you must do this or that it's like it's very much like you know we're each an individual and we're different and so we have to follow the path that that we feel we need to follow you know and I love that we're each in our own individual journeys and this, and honestly, my job is to be a, a support and, and, and also Barb and Linda's, um, to be a support and to guide you. But ultimately this is your life and you need to make the decisions that are best for you. So I'm very excited to meet you next week, Amber in, in the flash. And, um, thank you so much for coming on and talking about the program with me today. Thank you.